Dad, what's in the box? It's a Pioneer TX6502 tuner from 1977. Someone gave this tuner to me more than 20 years ago and I've never had the need for it. But the other day I found a new station in the car playing some old 80s hits and an American Top 40 countdown. They had an old Memphis DJ. But the thing about this station, it was very low power. It was scratchy, faded in and out. So I wanted to use this weak station to do a battle to see if this old 70s equipment is better or worse than modern equipment. So let's set it up. It's gonna be tuner, tuner versus tuner. tuner. We're gonna compare it to this uh, Yamaha RN301 that's a lot newer and use just a standard antenna lead and just see how these two tuners work on that weak station. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at the features of the TX6500 too. It is a separate component. It can make no sound on its own. You've gotta have an amplifier. So the whole idea here is you buy separate components versus a combo system, you get a little bit better quality. And it just has basically a tuning knob. There's not a lot to say about the features. The name TX6502 refers to the Type 2 tuner. I guess this is sort of a sequel to the 6500. All right, so you know how in the car when we're riding around and you wanna hear a station, you press one of the buttons, like one, two, three, four, five, six? Yes. Well, this has basically these little slider things that you mark the place on the dial. So if you want to get to that, you know, that station, you just move the dial to the marker, huh? That's crazy. Yeah, well, a lot of the older receivers didn't even have that. And you use this tuning meter to help you zero in on the station. On the back, you've basically just got your analog outputs and you've got a built-in AM bar antenna and places to hook up your FM antenna. The only th interesting thing on the back is this switch over here called FMD Emphasis, which is factory set. If you wanna have another box in addition to the tuner for a Dolby FM, you would put it in line and change the D emphasis. I don't guess Dolby FM actually took off. Reception was horrible on either receiver, just kinda holding the antenna and moving it to get the best signal. Is 97.7 and 100.1 Yes FM playing Memphis greatest hits. So the signal was totally unusable no matter where I moved that little wire. On the other receiver, I had to attach this uh, coax connector because it didn't have a place to screw the wires in, and it did not do much better. Pretty much no one won that test. For my next test, I put the antenna in the attic and used a dipole antenna, which was a little bit nicer. It's still basically a wire that comes with the receiver and uh, still hard to get a usable signal on the TX6500 too. Apparently 40 years of tuner technology made a difference because the Yamaha had a noticeable difference. It never got a stereo signal, but it was able to pull it in a lot better with the attic antenna. Really, I could get equal performance from the 6500 by repositioning it. So at this point I'm considering the tuner is basically equal, but of course the digital one is a lot more convenient. When you look back at the old receivers from the 70s, you can really see how important that FM tuning used to be compared to the way it is today. I mean, people just don't listen to it as much. And I guess if you want an audience today, you need a uh, strong signal. In closing, we'll leave you with uh, some shots of uh, some of the old 70s receivers features related to FM tuning that I have. Doing these wrap-up shots, I noticed my uh, Sansui 7070's MPX noise cancellation actually uh, seemed to cut out a little bit of the static. So we'll uh, leave you with that. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time for another video. Bye-bye. And you can keep coming back for more. Memphis Greatest Hits on 97.7 and 100.1.